Why do we need networks? In this lecture, we're going to talk about networks in general. I'll show you what a server is, what a firewall is, routers, switches, a lot of interesting things. Stay with me. It is pretty easy to come up with a definition. Network, it means that you have at least two computer systems that they are connected they are linked together they can work together they can see each other they can talk to each other what does it mean it means that for instance if you're at home and you have a router okay and they are linked okay it, it means that you have a router and then you have a laptop what else? You can have another PC, maybe a phone, what else? A printer, a tablet, a modem, a scanner, you know, everything that you can imagine. You know, to, today you can buy a fridge that is wireless. It means that you can monitor that remotely. It's crazy. And that's that's what a network is. You have at least two systems that are linked together. They can talk to each other, they can see each other, exchange information. And thanks to that, yes, you can browse the internet, you can go to Facebook, and of course, you can access all local files and documents as well. Here is a nice diagram that I found some time ago. I like to use it because it allows me to help you identify devices and components of a network that we use today. I'm pretty sure you, you're okay with uh, clients' PCs. That's pretty obvious and we'll not talk about that. Here is something that is more interesting, a server. What is a server? I'm an infrastructure engineer, I use Microsoft, but of course it can be a Linux server. In most companies that will be a Microsoft server, Windows Server 2008, 2012. In most cases it will run something that is called Active Directory Services. It means that you will have a centralized infrastructure everything on one in one place if you know what i mean it means files permissions printers policies everything that you can imagine will be on in in one place of course you can have more than one server the idea is the same that you have a place for instance imagine that this pc wants to access a file on that server and it is my favorite name when I when I when I teach it's Mike and John so let's use Mike Mike wants to access a file on a server you you go to the server and say okay Mike is allowed to do this or that I will add him in most cases to a group it means that Mike became a member of let's say HR group five minutes ago it is a good thing because groups are flexible why maybe next week your manager says well Mike he stopped working at our HR department and he was moved to sales make sure Mike is not allowed to access these files anymore and you don't have to go to 25 places and say, okay, well, what about this file? What about that printer? What about this, this area? What about that database? You don't have to do that because you have a group. It means that you have to remove Mike from that group and that's it. I want to stop here because we do not have time to talk about servers and Microsoft infrastructure. If you're interested, I think the best place to start is MTA service. Okay, it is a really nice certificate from Microsoft 
that you can get and learn, well, basics, fundamentals of Microsoft service. Of course, I cannot leave it like that. I, I, I have to show you a real server that is Windows Server 2012. Here you can see a nice dashboard server manager. It's, it's new. It's different. If you, if you think about Windows Server 2008 and 2003, it is better. It allows you to identify any issues straight away. Let's try and identify some network devices. Yes, we have a firewall and a router. A firewall is a device that in most cases is responsible for your security and the security of your network. A router in a small office home office network. In most cases, it is an edge device that is connected to the internet. Yes, thanks to that guy, you can browse the internet and please note it is a wireless router. And you all go, okay, I don't have any devices like that in my network and it's still a network. Yes, it is. If you, if you're at home, in 99%, you will have a firewall and a router in one box. It's one device. It's okay. A lot of even companies do that. What about the server? You don't really need a server. Some people go for a NAS server. Okay. A storage server. It means you can have cloud solutions. You can have a service like Dropbox in your own network. You can make backups, manage IP cameras. It is a really powerful device that you can run in your network. That's where I want to stop. In our next lecture, I will show you a firewall and the router will talk about network devices in our networks. Thank you very much. Introduction to networking. What is a network? Part 2. In this lecture, we're going to talk about firewalls and routers. Just to remind you, here is our, our simple network diagram and we are after this guy, this firewall over here. It is designed to make our network secure. I have a Cisco ASA firewall. We'll talk about Cisco devices later on. Later on. For now, I just want to connect to that device, Cisco ASA. 5505. It is again a small office, home office device. It means it's cheap, easy to manage, not powerful and good enough if you have 525 users in your network. Let's check it out. Here we go. I am connected. First of all, please note, I have my inside and outside interface. And you all go, what does it mean? Inside means that is my inside network, my network. It means that I, I can expect devices like printers, computers, scanners, phones to be over there. Outside, it is an interface that is connected in most cases to the internet. Okay, yes, thanks to that we can browse the internet, we can go to Facebook and post a message. Oh, I saw a really awesome course delivered by Marius, check it out. Thanks to this outside interface, your device can be connected to the internet. An ASA firewall is a really powerful device that allows you to enable a lot of interesting features. We do not have time and it's beyond our discussion to cover 
uh, things like okay how can I enable this or that I just want to introduce firewalls and show you what's available first of all please note there is a section called routing and you you say okay what does it mean it means that this firewall is a router it again it means it can route it can send packets it can make decisions shall i go this way that way that's what i said in a small office home office network you can expect to have an all-in-one device and that's what asa that's what cisco decided to do they created a device for a small office now please doubt of course there is a firewall we have vpn virtual private networks it means we can we can work from home in a secure way the last section is dedicated to device management it means you can create users and tweak settings that you need I hope it makes more sense now when you think about a firewall you can create a lot of interesting policies on a firewall you can decide Mike is not allowed to browse the internet this printer should not be available for HR departments and so on a lot of things that you can enable on a small box like a firewall that's what i said a lot of firewalls to be honest most firewalls that you can find today they have a router on board as well that's why they can be edge devices they can be connected to the internet directly let me say it again it means that you can combine these two features make it you know create one box here connected to the internet directly in our next lecture we're going to talk a little more about cisco i'll show you an asa 5505 a picture of of a firewall like that we'll talk about cisco certificates stay with me Thank you very much. Introduction to networking. Network commands that you need. I decided to cover cover three commands. ipconfig, ping and traceroute. You have to know them. Make sure that you play with these commands. They're available on Windows XP, Windows 7, 8, Windows 7, it doesn't really matter, you will find these commands everywhere, make sure that you're okay, you know how to use them. To access these commands, we go to start, and we type cmd. Thanks to that, we can access a nice black screen, we can type commands here, I want to keep the commands on the screen as well so you can see them let's start with ipconfig we type ipconfig and press enter it is enough to produce a really nice output that summarizes tcp ip settings it means we can see our ip address subnet mask default gateway and a lot of things that you need to know about your local network I'm pretty sure you know what an IP address is. It allows you it, it allows you to identify a device. It is like an ID number, okay, or a postcode. It is very specific. It has to be unique in your network. Thanks to that, computers and network devices they can talk to each other. A subnet mask, I will leave it for now because we have a section session dedicated to subnetting we'll talk about that later on what is a default gateway do you know in most cases it is a router an edge device that allows you to browse the internet the way it works is if your pc says i have no idea how to get to facebook.com it's not in my network then 
if a PC is confused, if it doesn't know, it says, well, I will send it to my default gateway. There is a chance that this guy knows how to get to facebook.com. It's not guaranteed, however, it's, I don't know what to do, I will just go over there, in most cases it is a router, and a router can help me, can take me to, of course, our favorite website, cisco.com, no, facebook.com. You have a lot of switches available for all these commands. What you can do, you can type ipconfig, question mark, you will see all commands that, all switches that are available for you. I want to show you this one, all. It's really important because you will see more, you will see your DNS, DHCP settings, a lot of important things. What I want to show you is DNS. What is DNS? Domain Name Server. It allows your PC to translate a name into an IP address. It means google.com into an IP address like 5.7.1.7. DHCP is a special server that can give out these IP addresses. That's where I want to leave because it is beyond our discussion to talk about services like DHCP DNS. For now, please memorize and understand that DNS allows you to translate a name to IP address. DHCP will give out these IP addresses. That was ipconfig. Let's check ping. Ping is a very simple command that allows you to check if a host is alive. It means I will ask, mate, are you alive? Can you reply, please? You can ping an IP address or a name. Let's say I want to ping google.co.uk. And google.co.uk says, yes, I am alive, if you're interested. Of course, if you know, you can ping an IP address directly. An example is 8888. You know what that is? The most popular IP address in the world, Google DNS server. If you know, you can ping an IP address directly. Why is it important to know that command? We'll talk about troubleshooting later on. On please note, request timed out. It means that one message was not delivered. Okay, something went wrong. Of course, you can press the up arrow. In most cases, it's a one-time thing, and we're okay with that. It can happen. You can imagine a lot of traffic, on, you know, on the internet. And of course, our message is not the only one. That's why it can happen. What you can do with ping, you can, you can keep pinging by using a T switch. Thanks to that, you can leave it even for hours and check if a connection is stable. Traceroute is a command that allows you to see the route taken by a packet. It means you can see all, how we call hops, all routers to the destination. As you can imagine, let's say you go to google.com. Of course, you will go through 20, 25, 30, 7, whatever number of routers, internet service providers. When you use Traceroute, it can help you identify an issue. I have CMD open. We type traceroute. In Windows it's trace RT. And then you specify again an IP address or a host. One switch that you have to use, it is D. If you don't use it, Windows will try and figure out what what the name of an IP address is and it takes forever. That's why you should always follow it and add D. Then let's say I want to go to google.com. 
oops, if I spell it, now it is going to show you all hops, all routers, all internet service providers that are on their way to google.com. Sometimes you will see request timed out. It doesn't mean that there is a problem with that message. Sometimes it's, it means there is a firewall. Firewalls don't like trace routes and in many cases they don't report themselves and that's why you can see request timed out even though there is a connection, there is a router, there is a way to get to google.com, you will see request timed out. I let it finish, please note trace complete. Our next lecture, Cisco. Thank you very much. Introduction to networking, Cisco. Introduction to the world of Cisco, it's very difficult for me to talk about Cisco in, in a course like that because it takes years to learn Cisco devices, management and so on. I will try and uh, give you a very good idea about Cisco, Cisco certificates, devices, things that you need to know if you want to start your career in, in IT, maybe you want to learn a little more about networking. Cisco certificates are really important. If you want to get a job in, in IT, even if, if it's not, if it's a support role, you should get that certificate. CCNA, it's really, really important to get that, guys. It's really important. A lot of companies, they ask for CCNA. That's, that is something that they require, even if you work with servers, because it proves that you know a lot about networks. You, you, it's not only how, you know, they, Cisco will, of course, teach you how, how you, how you can manage a Cisco router switch. Still, they will, they will show you a lot of concepts and things that you need to understand. Thanks to that, when you get an HP switch, that's absolutely fine to, to set it up. If you're CCNA certified, it should not be a big problem for you. Then, in a couple of years, if you're good enough, you can go to CCNP, the professional level, and then CCIE, yeah, something that is very difficult to achieve. How can, how can you start? There are three points I want to show you. First of all, build your own lab. In my CCNA real world uh, series, I discussed that in details. It's really important. If you want to work uh, with Cisco, you have to have a lab. You have to have a real network. That's the easiest way to learn buy a couple of Cisco devices. It is so cheap to do that on eBay. Play with them. That is point number two. Break and fix. The easiest way to learn is to break something, then you have to fix it. I have a, I have a rack at home, okay? A real rack at home with, I don't know, 15 different devices. And you can say, well, you are crazy. Yeah, I am. However, it allows me to learn a lot because it's my real network. If something goes wrong, I have to fix it. You want to see my rack? I'll show it to you. Here we go. Cisco switch to HP servers. Then a couple of firewalls, Cisco ASA5505 and CyberRoam, two core switches, two HP switches, a backup firewall, and a VMware server. Point number three, get a job. We have a dedicated lecture to 
to that point. That's why I'm not going to discuss anything in details. I, I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. You have to find a job. You cannot lab everything. It's very difficult to simulate all issues. And it's, you know, I can argue it's impossible. That's why experience is so important. We'll talk about that when we get to that section. In our next lecture, we'll talk about Cisco hardware. I show you a couple of Cisco devices. Stay with me. Thank you very much. Introduction to Networking, Cisco Part 2. I'll show you a couple of Cisco devices. Here we go, a very, very popular Cisco router, 887VA. Now I showed you an ASA firewall, ASA5505, that's the box. Over here, it's cute, isn't it? At the back, again, it is a small office, home office device. That's why there is a switch. It means you can connect devices. One thing that I want to mention, it is a PoE device, power over Ethernet. It means that you can connect, for instance, a voice over IP phone and you don't need a power cord to it. These two ports can deliver power. Of course, you have to buy a device that is compatible with that standard. Here is a lab that I use to teach Cisco. Please note there is ASA 5505, there is an access point. It's a clip from my uh, CCNA real world labs. Here is an access point from Cisco 1131, a very popular access point. It means you can connect to a device like that using a wireless card. There is a very similar router 881, Cisco ASA, three, four switches to be more specific and a few routers. In this lecture, we talked about Cisco. If you're interested, I encourage you to look at CCNA, CCENT. You will learn a lot about Cisco, how, how to manage a device like that. If you're interested in security, it is CCNA security. You, you will learn about firewalls and security protocols. In our next lecture, yes, subnetting. Thank you very much. Introduction to networking, subnetting. We are going to talk about IP addresses, subnet masks. I want to make sure that you have a very good idea where to start. We'll have two lectures dedicated to that uh, topic. I want to start with IP addresses and subnet masks. Make sure that you understand. I decided to include that in, in this series, even though it is, it's pretty advanced when you think about that. Subnetting is not difficult. You just need some time to figure it out, to think it through. That's why I like to introduce that straight away, because it gives you more time to understand, to, to play with it, to watch it again. Later on, it is pretty easy to move to more advanced topics. If, if I can give you that advice, subnetting is not difficult if you take your time. Make sure that you master all basic examples. You're okay with subnet masks, with private IP addresses, everything that we're going to cover in the next 10 minutes. Make sure that you understand every single word. Later on, it will be, believe me, very easy to move to more advanced topics. Let's get started. Ready? What is a subnet? and a subnet mask. You can think of a subnet as a piece of your network. 
and a subnet mask is something that allows you to to answer the following question am i on the same network as that printer as a server as a router it is a really important question let me give you the following example there are two pcs pc1 and pc2 they're connected to a switch and this switch is connected to a router that's how we draw a router let's say router switch and of course here access to the internet pc1 wants to send a message to pc2 and at the same time or a second later pc2 decided to go to facebook yes let's post some updates if pc1 and pc2 are on the same subnet they will talk to each other like that directly if pc sorry pc1 here yeah? if pc1 is not on the same subnet as facebook and of course facebook is somewhere else it is over here somewhere then pc1 will send it where to its default gateway because it's pc1 says well i i have no idea where facebook.com is it is not in my network i will send it to my router because this router should know how to route how to send that message to facebook.com it's time to answer the main question how will that happen not sure if you've seen a subnet mask before example is 255 255 2550 and for now to keep it simple please memorize that 255 means match or network and zero means i do not care i don't care now two ip addresses just you know the easiest is to the way to understand is to 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 try it out and uh, show an example 192.168.1.25 an ip address and 192.168 dot one dot one hundred and seventy nine are they on the same subnet now two five five means match one nine two one nine two yeah it's okay two five five yeah the third octet that's how we call it one yeah that makes sense and zero i don't care they do not have to match it means yes they are on the same subnet what if I added 192.168.8.71? Now, we know the first three octets have to match. 192, 168, and then it's 8. That's not good, they don't match. This IP address is not on the same subnet as the first two IP addresses. Now let's check the table that I prepared for you over here. We talk about IPv4 because there is IPv6 and in IPv6 the subnet mask is not as important in many cases but it's beyond our discussion. Our main focus is on something that we use every day which is IPv4. We have five classes of IP addresses. If you decide to go for let's say CCNA, MTA in networking, CompTIA, whatever you will have to memorize these ranges because you can you can get a question like that on your exam please note it's you know just you have to memorize the table Cla class a starts with one and the last ip address is 126 that's it there is nothing to understand you just have to memorize these five rows that's it um, one thing i want to i want to mention is that every single group has its they have they have a default subnet mask and this is something you have to memorize as well class a b and c over here 
A, B, and C. Now one more example to make sure you're okay with everything. Let's say I have 10.10.7.25, 10.10.25, .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 10.8.129. Can you give me a, su a subnet mask that will make them uh, make them available on the same subnet? So I want them to be on the same subnet. Can you go for a subnet mask that will make it happen? I hope that you d you said well I can go for class A or class B. Both will work. Class C is not good because the third octet, the third octet is not the same. It's seven and eight. That's why it's not good to go for two five five two five five two five five. It's okay to go for two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero, even though they match. I I said I didn't care. I'm okay. I don't really care. They match. They don't match. I do not care. That's why this subnet mask is okay. And of course, 255.255.00, because the first two octets, they have to match. That's where I want to stop. We'll continue our discussion in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Introduction to Networking, Subnetting Part 2. I will start with one example to make sure that you're, you're okay with uh, subnet masks. If not, please make sure you watch my previous video, 10.10.11.25, 10.10.11.79, subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Are they on the same subnet? The answer is yes, because the first three octets have to match. That's an octet, right? 255, 255, 255, 0. I hope it's okay. If not, please make sure you watch my previous video. What is this subnetting all about? You can get a lot of questions. One of them, let me give you an example. 192.168.1.0 and they asked you can you be so nice and divide that IP address into five sub networks what does it mean it means that we do not have enough IP addresses we we do not really need 254 IP addresses because that's what we have available over here because with this IP address and the default subnet mask 192.168.1.0 the last IP address is 192.168.1.255 we are not allowed to use the first we are not allowed to use the last IP addresses the first IP address is called the network address and this one is broadcast broadcast it means sent everywhere if i don't know where i'll send it everywhere you're not allowed to use 0 to 55 that's why the first ip address is dot one and the last usable is 254 that's why we have 254 ip addresses what you can get is we, we don't really need 254 IP addresses. However, we need like five subnets and around 25 IP addresses for each subnet. For security reasons, for many other reasons, you will not get five ranges. What I mean by that, they could just g give you 192.168.1.0 192.168.2.0.3.4 and 5.0 okay five different ranges it's you know but it, you just need 25 IP addresses and there are 254 you can say 
Wow, that that's a lot, mate. Uh, it's not. <laughs> there are some companies with, you know, thousands of users in one building. It's, it's not enough. And for security reasons, if you want to create a policy, a firewall rule, you don't want to have 500 uh, subnets and networks. You don't want that. That's why a question might be, you need five networks. Now, how do you do that? We'll not go through the whole example because that is far beyond our discussion that is introduction to networking. I want to give you a very good idea where to start. If you're interested, you, you go, if you go for CCNA or MTA in networking, you will learn everything in details. The idea is that we will play with our subnet mask. Do you remember 255, 255, 2550? Now, do you remember what I said? The first three octets, they have to match. It's for your network. And if they have to match, you're not allowed to touch them. You're not allowed to play with these octets. It means you can do something in the last one. And what you're going to do, you're going to take some bits, because it's in binary, and you will say, well, I will use them for my network. And of course, you will not end up having 254 hosts per network. You will get like, let's say, 16, 32, 64, and so on, because it's again in binary. So you can't be very specific. You can't say, I want to have 25 hosts per network it's in binary of course there are some other ways you can achieve things like that a anyway this is the way it works you take your original subnet mask and you play with it you take this octet because zero and do you remember zero i don't care it's for my host it means i can make that happen. I can, I can take the last octet and divide that into five, seven, or five hundred. Or here it's not possible. It, it would be possible with zero, zero into sub networks. I hope it makes sense. It's introduction to networking. That's more than enough for now. If you're interested, MTA in networking, you can learn more. Thank you very much. In our next lecture, how to get a job in IT. Introduction to networking. How to get a job in IT. I have 10 minutes to tell you how you can get a job in IT. It is not going to be an easy task. I will try my best, give you some tips and where you can start. Let's start with that table because it is something I like to show to, in a way, encourage people. And, you know, it, it is a good idea to show your salary. It's not bad, isn't it? It all depends where you want to work. Our training is dedicated to networking. That's why we are interested in roles like system engineers, system administrators, maybe software engineer. Project manager should have a very good idea about networking. Uh, database admin here? Yeah? Why not? You know how much you can earn now? How can I achieve that? There are three main things that you have to focus on. The most important one is experience. The second one is certificates. Then it is a good idea to have a degree especially if it's going to be your first job in IT. Experience. It's always tricky because you say, I want to find a job in IT. How can I find a job if I don't have any experience? How can I gain any experience if I can't find a job? 
we go back to our discussion, make your own lab, create a network at home. That's, you know, I spent like 20 hours recording, uh, I, I recorded more than 20 hours of videos dedicated to Cisco real world labs, where I, you know, show how you can play with your network, fix, break, see what, what happens if I press this or that. Of course, it will not replace a real world scenario, it will not. However, in my opinion, it is a very important point. It will allow you to, to learn a lot. When you get to an IT, to, to, to an interview, when you, when, when they decide to, let's say, send you an email and say, okay, can you pop in and we can have a chat? This is something you can, you can bring up. You can say, yes, I did this or that. Even if you say it was in my lab, in my network, for instance, you can say, well, I have an, a Cisco ASA as my edge firewall. You know, if I, I used to be an IT manager and if I, if I heard anything like that, I would be pretty impressed because it's, it's not, crazy difficult to to set it up however you have to know what you're doing it's not with all due respect it's not a linksys router you have to know something about cisco if you have an asa running at home of course there is a chance that you asked a friend um, still it's pretty easy to figure it out that's why I do not lie because i can ask one question and i'll figure it out is it a good idea to work in IT? Oh yes, it is. It all depends what you want to do. This training is dedicated to networking. That's why you can work as a network engineer. You can be a project manager. You can be an, a, a team leader, an IT manager for, for a network team. Networking is really important, even if you, if you're going to be a software engineer, there is a big chance you will have to understand what a subnet mask is because maybe you're going to, to design a piece of software that will use some protocols and then you will have to study even CCNA to code an application that a client asked for. In our next lecture, we'll try and fix a few issues in our network. Thank you very much. How to fix a home network, a small office, home office network? It's not an easy task. However, we have covered a lot of interesting things. I encourage you to watch the, the second lecture, the, the second section, network commands that you need, because we will need them. That is like you know you you have to know ping ip config i i will add two or three more commands and i show you how you can fix a network every time you start troubleshooting it is a good idea to follow a method something that will help you identify an issue and sort it out you all go well, but it's like a home network. What do you want? Do you want me to create a plan and implement? And the answer is yes. You don't, you don't have to do that on a piece of paper. I want you to think like that. Okay. I, I want you to think like that. I want you, I, I want to make you aware of things that you can miss if you don't follow a procedure like that. For instance, you receive a phone call from your client or from your friend and he says well my laptop is dead i don't know just take it away i don't really care you're not going to say well let's replace the system board and just what no you're going what are you going to say well you have to define the problem and get more information what do you mean it's dead the screen is dead, if you press the power button, nothing happens, what, what's wrong with it? 
It's just, you know, it's not working. That's what, you know, end users say. Or the internet is slow. What does it mean the internet is slow? Want to see an example? Stay with me. Thank you very much. Introduction to networking, how to fix a small office, home office network, part two. The internet is down, what shall I do? That is our scenario for this lecture. Do you remember? Point number one, let's define the problem. The internet is down. We need more information. What does it mean the internet is down? You can't go to Facebook or you try and send an email. What, what does it mean the internet is down? I can't browse the internet. Maybe it's a local issue. Maybe it's, it's an issue with a server, with your internet service provider, uh, with a website, with, with an email server. There are, there are a lot of things that you have to think of and that's why you need more information to keep it simple here we we know that the internet is down we can't browse we can't print sorry we can't browse we can't send any emails we have tested it on five different pcs so far we know the server is okay that's it that's all we know i want to use the cmd that's why I want to use that example. What I like to do is, of course, do IP config, make sure that I'm on the right subnet. That is my IP address, that is my default gateway. It is a good idea to go one hop, uh, hop at the time. What I mean by that is, you can imagine that You're over here. This is your router. That goes to another router, and another router, and, you know. And then you go to facebook.com. This is your router. You paid $25 for it. It's an awesome, cheap router. You're connected to it. Okay, it, it is a good idea to go one hop at a time. Can I get to that guy? What about this one? What about that one? What about, what if I go down here and instead of Facebook, I will access something else? Okay, we are over here. We are creating a plan. Now, we are going to implement that. Let's give it a go. So we want to go one hop at the time. We'll ping our default gateway, 192.168.1.1. It is a good idea to make sure it is stable. That's why you can use the, remember, the switches, T, you can keep pinging. Leave it for one minute, make sure it's stable. Time is one millisecond. That's what you should expect because it's your local network. You don't have to go anywhere. In most cases, you're even directly connected. That's why it should be fast. If you see like 500 milliseconds, that's not good. Please remember if you, if you use wireless, then it can be much slower. Still, you should not see anything like 300 milliseconds. We're good here. Now, how can I figure out what my next hop IP address is? If you're lucky, if you're lucky, you can use traceroute. Do you remember? And let's say google.co.uk. If you're lucky, you will see, here we go. That's the first hop, that's the second hop IP address. That is the default gateway for your router. Your router is going to send that message to another router and the IP address is over here. You can highlight, right click and copy that. Let's ping it. Again, T. Please note, one millisecond stable. Do you understand? Yeah, then it can be more difficult because it, you can have a firewall and so on, but what? What have we found so far? 
That is point number four. What have we found so far? We, we know that we can ping our router and we can ping our ISP, Internet Service Provider, because that is our ISP. It means that in most cases, the issue is beyond our ISP. I hope it makes sense. It will help you troubleshoot networks. I want to give you one more example related to wireless because there are a lot of things that can go wrong, go, can, that can go wrong with wireless. We'll talk about that in our next lecture. Wireless troubleshooting. Stay with me. Introduction to networking. Let's troubleshoot some wireless issues. I want to show you one application that you should download straight away and check your wireless networks around you. It's Insider. Just Google it. You will find it without any problems. There is a licensed version. There is a free version. You can see if you, if you need a license for some additional features. Here I want to show you what you can, what you can use this application for. The main problem with wireless is it's, it's not reliable. And what, what, what you can see is that you can have a lot of wireless networks around you. If they use the same channel, you will have a lot of problems. That's why it makes sense to use an application like that. It will scan your area okay around in this case a laptop it will produce a nice graph please note that is my network mkm and i can see the channels that are available that are in use that is my wireless you go to wireless and wireless settings in here what you can do you can go for a channel auto means I will try and figure out what the best channel is. However, what they don't tell you is that on some access points, well, it's, it's, it's really hard coded. They do not scan the, the frequency. So I do not trust a setting like that, an option like that on simple routers. It is a good idea to, to go for a channel one for instance, in my case, then you click save. In most cases, it is somewhere under wireless, wireless settings channel, and you can decide what you want to use. It's not easy to troubleshoot wireless. I hope that you will download Insider, play with it. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about your next steps. What can I do next? Thank you very much. Now I have a pretty advanced lecture for you, but do not worry. It's not to show you how to configure a feature that uh, I've got over here. No, it is to encourage you to show you how amazing it is to go for this career, how cool it is to configure a firewall, a switch and so on. So here I have a really cool lecture for you. I have an ASA firewall. You've seen this firewall already. And this is a brand new firewall from Cisco 5506. And this firewall has a really unique feature. It has something that is called a firepower service. It means that you can really filter and block whatever you want. It means that you can block, for instance, a website, a service, or even an application. And this is what I want to show you. I have ASA open and, uh, well, we're going to block Firefox. So I have Firefox open. Now let me refresh. I can access the internet as you can see and now I will configure my firewall and block Firefox. So over here I have a special rule. Again, it's not really designed this lecture to, to show you how to configure what is this. No, it's just to 
give you a very good idea what you can achieve if you decide to go for a more advanced path and certificate. Over here we have applications and here I, I just want to show you how amazing it is, how many things you can really block. So please note I have Firefox on the list but there are applications that you know very well. Let's say what can we block? Let's see if there is Outlook. Do you know Outlook? Yeah, from Microsoft. Yeah, so I can block Outlook, an application that allows you to uh, download your emails. Yeah, uh, what else? Of course, Internet Explorer, just we're talking about applications that can access the Internet. And the same applies to URLs. You can be very specific what you want to block. And there are a lot of predefined sections, as you can see. And with just one click, you can say, hmm, for instance, okay, search engines. Okay, you're done. Google, Yahoo, and so on. It's really cool. So we have this policy in place. Now we have to apply it because it was disabled. Now we need to apply it and then test it. I will pause the video and come back to you when it's done. I will open Firefox again and we'll test it. Okay, as you can see, policy is up to date on this device. It means that we can open Firefox again and we'll see how it goes. Here we go, as you can see, it's loading. It says waiting for Cisco.com. I can't access any websites using Firefox anymore. How cool is that? Just to make sure I can access the internet, the same website using Internet Explorer. As you can see, no problem. Yeah, how cool is that? You don't have to know anything about service ports. No, you just say, okay, I want to block Firefox. I don't want my users to access search engines, look for a job and so on. Again, my goal was not to show you in details how to configure this policy. It was to encourage you to learn more and I hope that you're going to become a network engineer and come back to me in a couple of years saying, oh, thank you, Marius, it was really cool. Now I can deploy all these things by myself. It's time to say goodbye. Introduction to networking. I always wanted to record something like that because even if you think about my training general networking, you can say, well, it, it's the same. It, it's not because general networking, we talk about uh, routers, switches, firewalls. Uh, I have a lot of labs in it and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty advanced when you think about some points and it's like six hours of videos. You need time, you have to lab. Here it is like, okay, I have no idea about networking or I have not touched a router for five years. I want to learn something about that in 90 minutes, in two hours. That's what I wanted to achieve and I hope that you enjoyed this series. Thank you very much. Hi, a D-Link IP camera. I'm going to deploy an IP camera and I decided to show it to you. It is a D-Link um, wireless camera that I bought a couple of days ago. And yeah, here we go. I will try and connect it to the network, set it up, see how it works. I hope you will enjoy it. And again, I encourage you to buy an IP camera, play with it. It's really, really fun. Okay, this camera is connected to the network. I th there is there is a quick installation guide. It says there are two ways that uh, D-Link suggests. First, you can use WPS. I'm pretty sure you know. Don't use it. Don't use it. It's not secure. Yeah, we'll not do it. Then they say you can use a CD and just run an application. It's really strange because they do not give you like a standard option. 
for people who know what they what they're doing it's like okay you can connect to the network it will get an IP address and I hope I will be able to access it it's really strange that they don't give you this uh, piece of information well we'll try and do it I have an IP scanner angry IP scanner my DHCP range starts with 100 and let's scan to 120 we have to find this IP camera laptop PC uh, okay so maybe it's 103 let's let's check here we go okay let's try admin and password no admin admin no one two three four five no hmm uh, one two three four no okay I will have to check what the default username and password is okay I found it online here we go there is no password <laughs> okay fair enough just press OK easy okay we can access it let's wait see what happens it can add here we go it can add a piece of software come on ah, not a good start to be honest let's try this one here we go here we go it can still complain oh it's not up to date I have some Cisco devices this is why I keep an old version of Java but uh, okay here we go okay Cool. Seems to be working. And we didn't use a CD or online application, just an IP address. Yeah, that's me. I'll show you a few options. Let's go to setup. Of course you can use wireless, it is a wireless uh, IP camera. You can set up dynamic DNS. Let's go to motion detection. I'll show you how it works here. Then you specify an area. Let's say you're interested in these three areas. And you can save settings. Then you can decide what to do with it. What I like about D-Link cameras is that you can say send a message immediately. It is a good thing. A lot of cheap IP cameras will wait and take like three photos and email it to you. It is useless because someone can um, can just grab this IP camera and smash it so it makes sense to take this option of course you can specify your email account and send an email you can upload your files to an FTP server day night mode just standard options 
let's go for wireless yeah you can enable wireless it will scan your ssids it will just show you a list of ssids yeah it is not an hd camera so it is only 640480 thank you very much